Greetings and salutations, comic book conversationalists. This is Comic Book Hangover. My name is Scott. We have three weeks worth of books to get through today. Uh, this has been a really... I, clearly, it's been really hard for me to do these videos on a week, weekly basis. I'm, gonna, I'm still trying to do them. But, you know, with the holidays, with school, with my dad, it's it's been pretty rough. Plus, we've got you know various sicknesses going through the house right now. Uh, but uh, at least the next couple of weeks, we should be okay because we're on Christmas break right now. So I won't be going to school. So I'll be able to do my videos a little bit sooner and, you know, get them ready to go live on Saturday. So the plan is still to have them on Saturdays. Um, but, you know, if, I, if, if they don't show up, I'm sorry, just hold on and we'll end up with a stack of books like this to talk about. So three weeks worth of books. Now, these are not really in release order. Uh, they are in more of a categorical, alphabetical, somewhatical order. So let's just start off with, you now let's do this one here. Start off with this. This is a Three Stooges versus Cthulhu. Number one. It's, a, it's actually just a one shot. I don't know why they put numbers on a one shot, but this is from American Mythology. Another Three Stooges books. I love my Three Stooges books. And probably the worst thing about this book is, uh, well, well, we're going to talk about this book a little bit later, but one of the things that always gets me is, is in the back of it, they have the list of all the available back issues that they have of the Three Stooges, and there's there's so many covers that I haven't gotten, and I'm like, I should get these, but I really can't afford it, so I try to avoid that, but, you know, it is it is what it is. All right. Yeah, see, I've, got, I've got a little something going on here. From Marvel, I grabbed Marvel Zombies number two. I know Marvel Zombies number three came out, but uh, this is the Black, White, uh, Black, White, and Blood miniseries. I still haven't read the first one, and honestly, I don't really have an interest in reading it. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to or not. Third issue came out. I'm going to look at it. There's a cover that I like. I'll pick it up. I might end up grabbing it just because I'm a Marvel Zombie completist to an extent. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I mean, I still haven't read the first issue, but that cover is pretty cool. I do like that cover. Nice uh, dead, uh, Daredevil. Uh, also from Marvel, Silver Surfer Reborn Legacy number four. Uh, this is a five issue miniseries, and I'm still loving the old school look of these books. You've got the, the old 90s era Silver Surfer logo. You've got the corner box. I love it, and it actually looks like a Marvel comic, and the Silver Surfer look, looking pretty good. I was really happy to see Nova on there. She's one of my favorite longtime characters. It's cool to see her back, even if it's in a story that takes place, you know, years ago. Moving on from Skybound. Uh, now, this is going to be an interesting section here. Uh, Void Rivals. Now, um, I do Void Rivals. And Transformers, and then next week is Duke number one. So I'm going to pick that up, and then next month is Cobra Commander. Uh, they're going to be five issue miniseries for the GI Joe books. I will be picking those up because it's all part of this Energon universe. Uh, but Void Rivals, I do read that regularly. Uh, they do these um, second prints of their books where they will have a Transformers character on them. Sometimes they'll have uh, like a Void Rivals character. I think the G.I. Joe, they're going to do the same thing. So they'll have a you know a G.I. Joe and a Cobra symbol in the background with a character in the front. I'm just getting the Transformers one because I'm more of a Transformers fan than I am of a G.I. Joe fan. Uh, so there's this one here, which is pretty cool. Uh, Shockwave. This is Void Rivals number two or number four for uh, second print. So I like the Decepticon logo and Shockwave on there. Uh, number five is where they bet me over a barrel. Because number five, they decided to do the Quintessence, and Quintessence have five faces. So naturally, there's uh, one cover there, and there's the next one. Gotta love these. Number three. Yeah, I know. I, I wound up getting all of them. I probably shouldn't have. It's kind of, kind of lame that I did, but um, I also noticed that. Uh, with these covers here, they are uh, doing uh, an Autobot second print and a Decepticon second print. So with that, plus the regular books, I mean, that means like Transformers, each issue I would be getting three copies of it that I don't really need. Uh, so what I may end up doing is sort of cutting back on those and just buying the Autobots and the Decepticons that I really like. Or if the artwork, if it's a character that I don't really care for, but the artwork is really outstanding, I'll pick that up. And you know, so I'm, I'm probably gonna be cutting back on these because these are already getting out of hand. So one of the reason why is why I dropped um, the uh, um, 
what do they call it, the Radiant Black series. Because it was just getting out of control. And uh, this is not a second print. This is a first print. Transformers number three. Love that cover. It's a great cover. Moving on. Some facsimiles. So these are the only uh, real, um, like, mainline DC books I picked up. They're all facsimile books. So I grabbed the facsimile reprint for Adventure Comics 260. Now, again, with these ones here, the best way to find the best way to realize and know if you're getting a facsimile or an original on these, you got to look at that cover price. DC doesn't really do a whole lot of changes to their cover, so that cover price is what you're looking at. Batman number five. Again, you're going to want to look at that cover price. This was not a $7 book. It is now because it is pretty thick. And I love it. It's great. Uh, they are doing this wonderful little program where they are, um, and, and Marvel's doing the same thing with Secret Wars and Amazing Spider-Man, where they're reprinting not just random issues or one issue here and one issue there. They're doing an entire storyline. Uh, so uh, DC is doing the Batman Year One uh, from Batman uh, 404. There's there's that one. It's a nice iconic cover there. Uh, one of those books I would probably never have in my collection um, for various reasons, but I'll, I'll take the facsimile. 405. Nice, awesome cover there. And so far, we're up to 406, 406. There you go. And with these ones here, again, the best way to, to uh, figure out if you're getting a facsimile or not is to look at that price right there, $3.99. This was not a $3.99 original. And they did this. And this, I would like to see more books like this. <laughs> Excuse me. This is, uh, they're calling it from the DC Vault. This is sort of a, of a facsimile what if. Uh, back when they were doing the death of Robin, the death in the family storyline, and they had that that the the, uh, the the phone line that you can call, you dial this number if you want Robin to live, you dial this number if you want Robin to die, and of course people didn't like this character, so they dialed we want him to, when I want him dead, so Joker beat him to death with a crowbar. Uh, this is basically this is Batman at number four twenty eight, death in the family, but this is the. Had Robin been picked to live, this is the book that would have come out. And I, I like this idea. I know there's got to be a lot of these unpublished, unrealized stories that Marvel and DC have put together but just ended up shelving for whatever reason. Now, I mean, with, with the facsimile line doing so good, so apparently doing good enough to continue and expand on, if this does well, I would love to see more of this. I know... Marvel put out a story, or they published, they teased the publishing of a story called The Last Galactus Story, where Galactus, it's a, it was it was going to be the Galactus and Silver Surfer, and they, you know, Galactus had just devoured the last planet, and that was all that's left, and um, from my understanding of the story, all that was left was him and the Silver Surfer, and he wound up grabbing those things on his helmet, and uh, uh, pulling, basically pulling, his, pulling himself apart, and when he did that, all the energies that he absorbed over millennia exploded out of his body and created the next universe. And the Silver Surfer went forth into that universe as that reality is a version of Galactus. And I've always wanted to see that story. That, at least that's, I, I could be wrong on, on some of the details there. I was very light on the details, but I could be wrong. But that is that is one of the stories that I've been wanting, I've been wanting to get for a very, very long time. And yeah, the next book that I want to talk about is this Godzilla, uh, Justice League, Godzilla, Kong, number one. This is the Roar variant. Um, a little iffy on this one here because as, as, you get, as you heard, you open it up and you hear Godzilla's roar, which is awesome. But this has been a really iffy book. When I picked this up, I tried it like six times because it was just the coolest thing hearing Godzilla's roar. And then I went to show my son later that day, hey, check this out. I opened it up, nothing happened. And uh, for the, the next week, I would open it up every once in a while, and nothing would happen. And now suddenly, it's working again. So I don't know what is going on with this, why it's working, why it's not, but it's still, it's pretty cool. Let's see if it'll still work. Ah, oh, look at that. That is beautiful. I do love that. And honestly, end of the day, it's not going to be one of those books I'm going to open up all the time. It's going to it's gonna be in a bag and board, and it'll be put in a shelf somewhere i may pull it out once in a while just to um you know just to hear the roar um the mechanism that's in it is kind of thick so i actually it may not go in a regular box and it, it might um i might end up putting it in a top loader or something and putting it up on a shelf because i mean that is that's still a pretty sweet cover stop all right speaking of godzilla we also have 
Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong number three of seven. I love that cover. That is a great cover. Like Godzilla's like, yeah, you want some more? Come on, get some more. And finally, Godzilla, uh, the best of Gigan. And again, these books, these are really thick books. I don't know if you can see how thick that is. It's a thick book. There's a lot of a lot of stuff in here for seven ninety nine. Uh, I don't read these because I have the originals, but I do like to um, get them because these covers are really cool. So these covers, I might not put in like a frame or something, somehow put them up on a shelf because I do like these best of covers that they do. So those are all the books that I picked up over the past couple of weeks. Some of these books I do want to talk about in more detail. Uh, starting with this one, uh, The Three Stooges versus Cthulhu. <laughs> I love the Three Three Stooges books. They're a lot of fun. If you're a Three Stooges fan, yes, you want to uh, you you want to check these out. Uh, they're a lot of fun. However, this one here, I think they kind of took the concept of the Three Stooges a little bit further away from the core essence of Three Stooges. So it really didn't work as well as I. I mean, I honestly had no idea what to expect coming into the into uh, into this book. So um, there's really not a whole lot. Uh, nothing really stand out. That, that I could talk about. It's just, you know, pointing the Three Stooges against, you know, something, you know, a concept like this, oh, excuse me, and, you know, having H.P. Lovecraft in it and what uh, the stuff that happened to Curling. It's just, it's a little too far removed from the Three Stooges than, than what, I, um, what I expect from these books. So I say out of all the Three Stooges books that I picked up from American Mythology, and I'm pretty sure I've gotten them all, even the Shemp special, this is probably the one that I like the least. Uh, but still great art. I mean, the, the, the people, you could tell that they're fans of the Stooges and, you know, they try to do the best they can and, and show as much respect for the Stooges as possible. Uh, but it just, it just kind of, just kind of fell short, you know. Uh, next one I want to talk about real quick is, uh, and this one, there's going to be, um, there's going to be some, a little bit of spoilers, but you know, this book came out a while ago. I shouldn't have to do spoiler alerts anymore. So, uh, but this is going to be Transformers number three. Now, Transformers number three, this is, it's like the first issue came out, boom, it was an amazing first issue. It was so much fun. It was like, it was like the Godzilla minus one of Transformers comics. You know, we, we knew it was going to be fun and entertaining, but we, my God, we had no idea how much this uh, Daniel Warren Johnson was going to knock it out of the park. I mean, he not only knocked it out of the park, I mean, he knocked it into the next park and it bounced out of that into the next one and out of that one into the next one. I mean, that guy, he just, he just, he knows these. He knows. He's a fan. He's a believer. He's he's a family. He's Transformers family. This is this, this guy. Uh, the writing is great. The art is great. I cannot say anything more about it. I cannot praise it any higher than what I can praise it right now. That just This is by far my favorite Transformers series. Uh, this one here, though, we take Optimus Prime to a whole new level. Uh, he gets into a fight. He Not with Soundwave, though. It's not Soundwave he gets into a fight with. But he gets into a fight, and he gets injured pretty badly. Uh, it's to the point where like his arm is just kind of dangling off. And the dude rips his arm off and starts beating a Decepticon with it. It's... <laughs> it's something that I have never, nobody has ever seen in Transformers before. Optimus Prime beating down a Decepticon with his own arm. It was so much fun. And I am looking forward to Transformers number four. My only thing is, is uh, Johnson has set the bar so high on this series. I'm just worried that he's going to end up, he's going to try to one up himself with every issue. You know, got to get better, got to get better, got to get better. Without really understanding that, yeah, you can reach this this level. <coughs> excuse me, you can reach this level, and you can keep it there for a little while. You don't always have to one up yourself. Just keep that level, keep that excitement, keep that level of respect. Not just for the franchise, not just for the characters, but for the fans, because that's why that's that shows through these first three issues of this series. It shows the respect and the love that this guy has, not only for the franchise, not only for the Transformers, the Autobots, and the Decepticons. But for the fans, and it's that that love and that respect shows, and it, it makes this, in my own humble personal opinion, the absolute best Transformers comic that I've read in a long time. Actually, um, I think it's uh, my favorite Transformers story was IDW's All Hail Megatron. I love that one, and after that, uh, IDW's Transformers line just went downhill. It went to pot real fast. Uh, this is definitely as good as, just a little bit better than that in terms of just scale and scope and and the fact that 
you've got that scale and scope of it, and you have just so few characters, and he's doing so much with so few characters. I can't wait to see when he's adding more Autobots and more Decepticons into it. It's going to be a lot of fun. <coughs> Excuse me. The last one I want to talk, to talk about, Justice League Godzilla Kong, this series. Again, just like Transformers, you got people that are behind this book that are just... They're, they're fans. They are fans. They're believers. They're family. And it shows through this. Now, this one here, probably the best thing about this one is, is the fallout of issue two, where you've got Shazam you know, being guilty because he blames himself for the fact that Godzilla kicked Superman's ass. And uh, as of this issue, Superman is dead. Uh, the, the Godzilla's radioactive breath killed him. Burned him alive, and just he's he's a crispy uh, a crispy Kryptonian right now, and it's just it's just so much fun. And you, you know, like Behemoth shows up, and some other of the Titans show up from the legendary universe, and just seeing the fact that it, it's great because you would think that with um, uh, with these with these superheroes they faced off against giant monsters and godlike beings before, but it's like in, in this 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 reality. They still they they have no idea how to handle these things, and Godzilla being the absolute force of nature that he is, they don't know how to handle that. I mean, they can handle you know Dark Side, they can handle all these other characters, but when it comes to Godzilla, there's no way to handle that. The thing is, is though at the end of this issue, issue something calls the Titans. We don't know if it's Godzilla, we don't know if it's something else, and that last page reveal. I know we might be getting some Mecha something or else. Mecha Godzilla, Mecha King Ghidorah, Mecha something. But they've got something that looks very awful familiar from the Godzilla vs. Kong movie. So that is it. Those are all the books that I picked up over the last couple of weeks. And uh, <coughs> as far as cover of the week, you know, we're gonna go, we are going to go with this one here. If it'll work. Hopefully it works. We're going to go with this one because you've got that awesome cover and you've got... You got that roar, and even the interior of that, that looks so awesome. Uh, that is from the first issue of Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, it looks great in that coloring, so there's that. That'll be your cover for the week, and uh, I'm going to wrap this up because it's going to be pretty long. I'm going to, I'm, I, like I said, I got the next couple of weeks off, so these videos, they should be a little bit more like clockwork, and I'll be getting these out on Saturday. I'm, I'm hoping to get them around Saturday around noon. I want to be more consistent with this because I think it would be easier for me to check them out if they know I'm going to have these videos done on a regular, consistent basis. But if it doesn't happen, please bear with me. i got a lot of stuff going on, and, and I do hope you guys understand that. You know, as much as I like doing this, there is real life. There is responsibilities, and you know, i got to do what I have to do before I get to do what I want to do, which is these videos here. So I do appreciate all of your love and support. I hope everybody has an amazing holiday. Uh, I'll be, if any, like, comic book stuff or, you know, anything like that that I get for Christmas... Uh, this, uh, what, Monday, um, I'll probably end up just doing like a TikTok video for it, so you can check out my TikTok, I got a bunch of stuff over there as well, and, uh, uh, but other than that, I hope everybody has a great, safe, and happy, and joyous holiday, whichever holiday you celebrate, fine, have fun, enjoy your family, enjoy your comics, uh, and of course, like, comment, subscribe, show some support, some support here, I'd appreciate it, uh, go ahead and throw me some comments, I love getting in conversations with people, and uh, we will see everybody next week with another small batch of comic books. Um, yeah, that's it. Merry Christmas. See you next week. Bye.